CBS 8 News Weekend. Some Republicans have been protesting outside the Alabama Education Association headquarters in Montgomery. They say they fear the group led by state Democratic leaders could sway the GOP runoff race for governor in just three days, and they want it stopped. Good evening, I'm Jenna Deary. Thanks so much for joining us. CBS 8 News is everywhere tonight, and we start in Montgomery. CBS 8's Anjali Lone joins us now with the big story on CBS 8 News Weekend at 6. Anjali? Thanks, Anjali. Voters will choose between candidate Bradley Byrne or Robert Bentley for the GOP spot in the governor's race during the runoff election on July 13th. Republican candidate for Governor Bradley Byrne says he's determined not to allow Democrats to influence the Republican runoff election for governor. He sits down with CBS 8's Tim Lennox to discuss how his longtime fight against political enemy Paul Hubbard, leader of the Alabama Education Association, has affected his campaign. He even criticizes the organization, saying it doesn't work in the best interest of most teachers. I know a lot of teachers that say they don't like the tenure law. Hear more from Bradley Byrne tomorrow evening at 5.30 during CBS 8's On the Record with Tim Lennox, just before 60 Minutes right here on CBS 8. A new law could tighten protection for victims of domestic abuse. Anyone who has been dating for six months can now seek a protection from abuse court order. Before, abuse victims had to be married, divorced, or have children with their abuser. Statistics show 35% of domestic violence victims are in dating relationships. A series of deadly attacks in Afghanistan have claimed the lives of six U.S. soldiers today. They were killed in five separate attacks in the country's volatile east and south regions. At least a dozen civilians were also killed. NATO officials say violence is on the rise there because NATO forces are moving in. The Taliban heavily controls that region. 23 American troops have been killed so far this month. Some Ohio residents are back in their homes tonight after a major chemical leak forced them to evacuate this morning. In this news across the nation, crews were called in to an industrial complex in Toledo, Ohio, after a toxic substance began leaking from a cylinder there. A chemical cloud looking like smoke could be seen rising from the building you can see right there. A nearby interstate was also shut down and some neighborhoods were evacuated. Meanwhile, firefighters in Montgomery County are training to be able to handle chemical emergencies. They went out to an open field today in Pike Road practicing on what to do should a chemical leak or spill happen. They created real life scenarios and used dummies like you see there along with real life victims to know how to respond. Firefighter Lee Helm says the training may not have been possible if it weren't for some federal funds. Montgomery EMA got a grant. Firefighters from eight different departments practiced in today's exercise. And you didn't have to be a firefighter to feel some extreme heat today. But let's check in now with CBS 8 First Alert meteorologist Micah Harris to see if any relief may be in store for us later tonight. Micah, what can you tell us? Through well, the right next few minutes. Thanks so much, Micah. Still to come, Roman Harper is back in Prattville practicing his golf swing and raising money all at the same time. The 18's Patrick Devers will have that coming up a little later. But first, could the end to the massive Gulf oil spill be in sight? That answer is next. You're watching CBS 8 News Weekend at 6. CBS 8 News everywhere with Jenna Deary, meteorologist Micah Harris, and the 18 Stu McCann. This is CBS 8 News Weekend. The operation to switch caps on top of the leaking oil well in the Gulf is underway tonight. Meanwhile, a new project has begun to protect fragile coastlines. CBS News correspondent Terrell Brown has the latest from the disaster in the Gulf. The federal government says the seafood coming out of the Gulf is safe to eat. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has finished testing about 400 samples of seafood. It says none has shown high enough levels of contamination to be concerned. Of course, for the latest on the disaster in the Gulf, you can always go to our website, waka.com. And if you want to add some fruits and veggies to that seafood platter, today may have been the day to get them. Hundreds of people turned out for the 4th and 40th annual Farmer's Market Day. People hit dozens of stands outside the state farmer's market in Montgomery for fresh produce brought in by the truckloads. One Alabama farmer says unlike your typical grocery store, there is no mystery where your produce is coming from at the market. 
It's not like going to a grocery store. You're not sure, you know, when they have they been in the truck for two weeks or one week, and uh, and that's just not only today. Uh, all the fruit and vegetables we come out here are are picked either the night before or the day before they get out here. And if you want to go pick up some of that produce, the State Farmers Market is open from 7 to 5 every day. Some rain may have washed out some of our afternoon plans today, but could it come back to wash out the rest of the weekend? CBS 8 First Alert meteorologist Micah Harris is back next to tell us what lies ahead in your exclusive 8-day forecast. Stay with us. The Rio Grande River in Laredo, Texas is expected to remain high for several days after cresting overnight from recent rains. The National Weather Service says the river reached more than 42 feet as water from reservoirs upstream and heavy rains from two tropical weather storm systems saturated the normally dry area. Several neighborhoods in Laredo have been evacuated with some homes getting up to two feet of water in them. And I don't think that we've seen any kind of rains like that, but maybe some people might think that it would be nice yeah, about some rain this afternoon. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's definitely welcoming and it's definitely relieving us from the heat. Okay, As we go ahead and start to ramp up, get more sunshine in here, we'll start to see them in the upper 90s once again. And I'm sure that's some welcome news for many people that have gardens. I've been seeing Absolutely. a lot of people outside yes. trying to water and take precious care of some of those plants. Yeah, I think a lot of people are enjoying this rain. Yeah, to Absolutely. have it come in for a while. Yeah. All right, thanks so much. Yeah. We appreciate it. Alabama's Greg McElroy gets a lesson from quarterback royalty and former Lehigh product Antoine Cal Caldwell is back in the capital city today. The eight teams Patrick Devers will tell us how he's helping out kids from all over the river region. That's coming up next in sports. I actually have a little trivia for you. Do you? Today is the <laughs> anniversary of the hottest day ever, and I'm not going to let you look. Okay. Hottest day ever back in 1913 in Death Valley, California. How hot was it? Well, I actually saw the answer during the break, God. so I can't. I'm going to let Patrick You're do this cheater. one. Is it 134? Was that it? Lucky guess. <laughs> I know. Lucky guess. It's all up here. Let's go ahead and look at our weather outside right now. Things still starting to wind down a little bit if you're headed out to the Biscuits game. Looks like a little bit of chance of weather for tonight, but still very nice for tomorrow. All right. Thanks so much for watching CBS 8 News Weekend at 6. We'll see you right back here at 10 o'clock. See you then.